Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the Churchill 3. It's a tier 5 Soviet premium heavy tank. It's located on the north spawn of Fisherman's Bay and it's under the command of Bubblus of Olymp. And he's about to have a little unrestricted fun seal clubbing the enemy. Game on. Well, this is actually probably one of the most useful of the Soviet premium tanks because you can buy it at tier 5 and then use it to train your crews for the Soviet heavy tanks further down the line. Now they made three or rather they supplied 301 of these tanks to the Soviet Union by lend lease in 1941 I think it was or 1942 and they were sent to Murmansk on the northern route so uh, yes they had a bit of difficulty getting there and I think some of the tanks never made it they got sunk but anyway this one is armed with the six pounder gun which is capable of doing 75 alpha with standard AP 110 millimeters of pen and with the premium rounds it's got 180 millimeters of pen and you can see the bubblers has loaded the premium rounds straight away because he intends to just blast the enemy now the fact about this tank is that it can fire almost like an autoloader. So that, uh, that six pounder gun you fire once every 2.19 seconds by the book, but with the reload on this one, he gets a one shot every 1.89 seconds. So he's literally just pulverizing the enemy. And it's the death by a thousand cuts that uh, is often spoken about. Ooh, that was a 90 millimeter round from the BDRG-1B. 235 hit points gone. He can't afford to let that happen too often. Now the initial Churchills, the Churchill 1, which we just saw up near the center, near the center line, actually had um, a 75 millimeter howitzer mounted inside the vehicle. But um, it wasn't very effective and uh, it did have problems. In fact, the Churchill does have problems on the armor, but you can see he's side scraping there and the enemy is having difficulty penetrating him. He blocked that shot from the BDR, the second shot. He even blocked a shot from another Churchill 3 there. He's racking up the damage as well with this uh, shot because of the way it fires so quickly. Okay, needs to pull in. Yep, blocked another shot. Now, there was a difference between the Churchill 3 and the Churchill 4 because they actually used welded turrets for the Churchill 3. But the Churchill 4 actually had a cast turret, which may actually made it much stronger because they had, they had problems with the quality of the metal. And one of the main reasons why they had problems with the quality of the metal was down to the fact that they had to build the Churchills really quickly after what happened in Dunkirk. Because the British Army didn't have any tanks left, well, very few, to protect the United Kingdom uh, after the fall of France. So they needed tanks and quick. And unfortunately, they weren't very good at building them in quality. Okay, sees the KV-1. He should have ducked behind the wreck there and shot at the enemy from behind the wreck because now he's found the BDR. Oh, he took another hit. And the KV-1 hit him as well. And it looks like the KV-1 hit him with an 85mm round because he lost 150 hit points or 151 to then. But look at the way he's shredding that KV-1 to pieces. And he's hitting the tracks every time and the Churchill one's gone, uh, the KV one's gone down. Now it looks like the BDR's gone, the other Churchill three's gone, and now he's free and clear to actually move towards the enemy cap area. Still blasting away with the premium rounds. It's gonna cost him a lot at the end of the game. That's a Churchill one, the one with the howitzer in it. Wasn't very effective. Churchill is a infantry tank. It was designed to be able to walk with the troops. It was kind of like a First World War type design that it was slowly moved with the troops towards the enemy trenches. It hasn't got a very fast speed, only 28 kilometers an hour maximum speed. Um, the engine was actually very inefficient. Plus on top of that, very difficult to work on because it was deep down inside the hull of the vehicle. The suspension is difficult to work on as well. In fact, a lot of things about the Churchill made it very tough to uh, maintain. 
but it was fairly rugged in other ways and as you saw he managed to block shots that came from that BDR G1B just merely by positioning himself well and you can use that on the Churchill 3 if you have any missions where you have to do a lot of block damage this is perfect for that sort of uh, purpose okay he spots a Stug a dry Alcerin B and he's well he's managed to kill the Stug but he took a round from a bathtub and he's now trying to kill the bathtub at range oh that's the RT Okay, I think he's going to go for the Matilda now. And he's just punching his shell straight through the turret of the Matilda. Originally, the Churchill actually had a two-pounder gun, the 40 millimeter, But they actually put the six-pounder in. It became much more effective. Later on, they actually armed it with a 75 millimeter gun. That was the Churchill 7. And that saw action in Normandy. Okay. Well, with only one kill so far, but a hell of a lot of damage, 2,797 hit points, he has potentially the uh, possibility of actually getting the highest damage in the game if he can keep up the damage rate. Now, it appears that the remaining five tanks on the enemy team are over in that corner. One enemy tank has actually gone up north and is in the cap area, the T-28, I think. And yes, he suddenly thought about going back and defending the cap. Well, he can't get shots on the M41, but he's actually, yes, he's decided he's going to make a move towards the enemy cap area, or the, his own cap area, to get resets. Yeah, he's actually asking his teammates to come with him. If they let that guy cap out, then it would be rather embarrassing that they actually lose the game, even though they have a three tank advantage. Yeah, we've got a wreck in front of you there. <laughs> Need to drive around it. Now, he should be able to get a shot on that. The view range for this tank is 350 meters. And there's the T28. One shot in to reset the cap. Now he's just going to take this guy apart. And one more to kill, and he gets him. So he's got his second kill in the game, and now he's up to 3,061 hit points of damage. There's two enemies left, a 14 TP and the Stugtai Alsudung B. Yes, they had another one. And everyone thinks they're down in the southwest corner of the map. The 14 TP was actually seen over in the western. Oh my gummy has gone into the cap. Well, that was a bit silly. And there's the Stug as well. So the other two tanks must be up this end. And they must have tried to go to the cap. He's having difficulty because he's auto-aiming. He needs to manually aim. That's it because it won't catch up with the tank if the tank's moving quickly. And the Stug goes down to the Churchill 1 on our team. But, oh, we're about to cap out. Oh, we're going to miss out on the bonus. And they've capped out. What a waste. Oh, they got the last kill. The T-34 got the last kill. And that means they do get the bonus. Well, I'm sure Bubbles must feel terribly dirty after doing that uh, very, very naughty thing. And basically seal clubbing everybody in sight. He actually managed to get his first ace tanker in that game. Yes, you can tell it's the first one because he's got scrolls underneath. And yes, he's got them on this occasion. He also got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. A shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 12. And a hand of God for surviving the battle having received damage from at least four different enemy tanks or more. He also got a steel wall for blocking the most damage in the game, at least 11 hits and over 1,000 hit points of damage, as well as a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his win eight from that game, 10,873, which is super unicum standard. This is actually quite a fun little tank to play in these battles, because uh, uh, basically, if you are a, an experienced tank player, you can play it very well, either block a lot of damage or you can deal a lot of damage on the enemy uh, and although it's difficult to get an ace tanker because of course it does depend 
on who else is playing this tank at any one time, it can be a valuable crew trainer. We look at the team scores, we can see he got the highest damage with 3,293 hit points. Second highest damage was the T28 on the enemy team, the guy he killed in the cap, he got 1,566. Third highest damage was the Churchill 1 on their own team with 1,091. When it came to kills, it was the T-34 who did the best with four kills. Three kills went to the Churchill 1. Three kills also went to the Panzer von Fier on the enemy team. And two kills went to Bublis, uh, the BDR G1B on his own team, who also got an Invader medal, so he was one of the cappers. And the Electo, as well as the T-28 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, look at that base score. 2,398. Yes, that's a proper bit of seal clubbing there because the next highest scorer only had 674, which is oh, it's less than a third of the, uh, of the damage that, or the XP that Bubblers managed to get in that game. And the next one after that, 640 XP, would you believe it? So basically, he dominated that game. 74 shots fired, 53 of those were direct hits and 44 penetrations. And in fact, I think virtually every shot was premium ammo. 3,293 hit points of damage, of which 498 were at more than 300 meters. I think those were the shots on the T-28 when he just managed to spot him and shoot him in the cap area. 14 hits received from the enemy, only six of which were penetrations, but some of them were 90 millimeter rounds from that BDR G1B seven non-penetrations and one hit by way of splash damage as well 940 hit points of damage blocked by armor he spotted three enemy vehicles damaged nine in the enemy killed two and did 961 hit points of damage assistance and he got 63 defense points when he reset the cap so he missed out on getting a defender he earned a massive 104,853 credits for the battle and after personal reserves of 52 427 and a 40,000 mission completion he had 197,280 credits but look at the score on the uh, on the resupply of ammunition 177,600 credits just to resupply all that premium ammo and he ended up with 17,108 credits profit he also took away 15,827 experience points because he got a reward for completing a mission of 7,194. So at least he's got a really good crew trainer here, which will mean that in very short time, you could have a multi-skill crew, which you can then move into other tanks and then use them to, uh, to drive your tier 8s, tier 9s, and tier 10 Soviet vehicles around uh, and just keep training the crews at uh, tier five um yeah so it's actually a very effective little tank bit of a seal clubber as i said but uh if you um don't mind doing that because actually it does kind of put a lot of new newbies off the game if they come into the game and they suddenly get seal clubbed they probably uh, won't be ha too happy about it but then it might it might encourage them to go out and get a churchill three of their own and then they'll actually have a bit of fun for a change if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and gets the videos noticed by other people. And thank you for watching.